So what is this, the 10th, 11th film in the franchise and we're still going? I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. And by the way, we're actually at almost 150 subscribers. That's incredibly insane. Thanks guys. So Hobbs and Shaw was a movie that I wasn't wildly excited for. I was kind of excited for it, but not wildly. I've never been a huge fan of the Fast and Furious movie, so when I saw the first trailer for Hobbs and Shaw, I thought, okay, this is probably going to be your standard action flick. Cheesy one-liners, huge action set pieces, and the main theme of pretty much every Fast and the Furious movie, spin-off or otherwise, family. And yeah, it's all here. Now this one stars Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham as the main leads of this movie. They play Hobbs and Shaw. Two guys who don't quite see eye to eye, even when the world is at stake, which creates for some insanely funny back and forth that actually never gets old in the movie. Now what really mixes things up is the fact that there's sort of a buffer between these two. It's Shaw's little sister who's played by Vanessa Kirby, who now that I think about it could actually play a pretty good Black Widow after seeing this movie if Scarlett Johansson decides to leave her role at any time. Now she injected herself with the virus after being attacked by Brinkston, a former friend of Shaw who seemingly died after he shot him in the head and later got brought back through science. Which as he puts it, he's now Black Superman. Now, this virus is in a capsule and they have 48 hours to infiltrate a heavily armed base, get a device that sucks the virus out of her which leads to the end of the movie of an all out war against this secret organization that wants to advance humanity with cybernetics. And some pretty ridiculous stunts at the end too which are actually pretty fun to watch as they always are in these kind of movies. Now look are these the best performances? No, not by any means. But it's an action flick, you don't need Oscar performances and honestly it looked like the three actors were having a lot of fun despite the drama between Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham. If I recall there was any anyways. Now I know this series gets some flack for constantly talking about family but honestly it's one of the aspects that shines in this movie. It's not super deep, it's not thought provoking but it made the character seem less like an action figure and more like a human. On one side you have Shaw who has problems with his sister after being falsely accused which made his sister basically disown him. On the other side you have Hobbs who left his family after sending their dad to jail and never came back for 25 years. Now one thing I didn't expect were two actors that were in this movie, Kevin Hart and Ryan Reynolds. I didn't even know these people were actually in this movie so it was a welcome addition and very surprising. They were insanely funny. They're always insanely funny in any movie they're in and it's a welcome addition. And of course we can't forget about Edris Elba who is back in another action flick and he's good. I wouldn't say it's his knockout performance but he served his purpose and made a challenging villain. Not a threatening one but a challenging villain for the two and was decent. Now of course his character Brinkston was being controlled and I smell a sequel by the way this movie ended. I mean there's really nothing new on the bad side of this movie. It's your standard action flick with your standard flaws. Over the top cheesy jokes, over the top action, obvious green screen. It's all here just like it was with all the good stuff. In the end, Hobbs and Shaw was a decent action flick. I would probably watch it on my day off once in a while. It's a popcorn flick and I think that's all the movie was really trying to be. I give Hobbs and Shaw an 8 out of 10. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and have a good one.